Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Rocky Top Review on Mix 1041 and Talk 101.3, the Buzz Radio, and we're on Mix TV. Dot TV. We're presented by CHI Memorial. CHI Memorial, imagine better health. And don't forget Memorial Convenient Care right here in the Public Shopping Center, Cleveland. Well, fresh and well-rested off a much-needed buy, Tallahassee returns the field this week to add another chapter in one of the oldest rivalries in the SEC. As today, the balls travel to Kroger Field to take on the Kentucky Wildcats. The balls and Wildcats both coming off Two game losing streaks, but both teams will be trying to end their streak. Tallahassee will try to avenge their uh, Kentucky's 34 to 7 win over them in Neyland Stadium last year. And with that, we welcome you again, Week Nine Rocky Top Review. I'm joined as always by Stephen Shelton. Good. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It's 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 all downhill from here. I was reading something. I apologize. Yeah, well, that's fine. Uh, I thought you were asleep. Jason Cox. Hello, hello. Go Braves. Go Braves. Go Braves. He's wearing his Braves. And Josh Rogers. Go Braves. Well, and let's start there. Actually, before we get into football, uh, Shelton, we had the honor of being in Atlanta for Game Three. We did, and uh, I'm glad I talked Josh out of Game Five. But that's not the point. Uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted, to, you know, what a tremendous year, just a tremendous story. Uh, when you think about the Braves that were left for dead when Acuna went down with a knee injury, for them to pull off the trades that they did and, and bring a bunch of guys that people had kind of given up on, and for these guys to to Went, you know, two guys we traded for won the uh, ALCS MVP and the World Series MVP. Neither one of these guys were on the roster in July. I mean, it just it's just a fascinating story and, and something I've been waiting for since 1995. And it's uh, Christmas at Starbucks. Jason Cox. <laughs> well, Josh Rogers, I've got a question. Is this yeah. the year the curse of the, the Atlanta, Georgia sports teams end? I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking about that. But yeah, <laughs> you know, it's uh, for me. You know, Braves win the World Series is probably one of the biggest things to happen sports-wise in my life. You know, now I've got Georgia at number one ranked yeah. and uh, in the college football playoff. And, and they've, you know, looking at the, the top of the, the rest of the top ten, you know, there's not really many other teams that can compete with Georgia how they are defensively and offensively this season. And so I, I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want to say anything. But if, if we keep winning – uh, at Georgia, un, I mean, unbelievable for Atlanta. You know, it's yeah. just I, the the curse is not going to be done because the Falcons are trash. I mean, that is just That's true. The Falcons are it's horrible. Right. So it's yes. dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. there, there's, a new, there's, there's a newspaper over there on Steve's desk that talks about making memories through the World Series. And <laughs> you know, I, I watched every every game with my my middle son, and we didn't get to go to a game or anything. But man, just sitting there watching, uh, you know, just we're going to be talking about that for a long, long time. Uh, Chad Smith, Jeff Duncan and I we've been talking about the 90s and all that this whole week and you know you make memories through these things and when your team is doing what the Braves did it's something you never forget you and I if you'll recall we watched a 1996 World Series game at your house on a Saturday night I remember and, I, and uh, that was a Yankees uh, I don't know if we won that that's when yeah. the Yankees came back but anyway well, let's talk football, and uh, we're going to go back and look at what happened before the bye week, Shelton. Of course, uh, Tennessee and Alabama. Well, I mean, again, I, I've been saying this all season. Um, Tennessee's problem is not talent. Tennessee's problem is depth. Uh, if you look at this game, it, it, at, at halftime, we're sitting here thinking, wow, you know, this is, this is a heck of a game right now. And so, you know, 21-14 at halftime. Uh, we both get three points in the third quarter, and then we run out of gas. Alabama scores four touchdowns. You know, they outscore us 28-7. The score is not indicative. Uh, the 52-24 the score is not indicative of what really occurred uh, in Tuscaloosa. But, uh, you know, H uh, Hendon Hooker was 19 of 28, 282 yards. He averaged 10 yards a throw against Alabama, had three touchdowns, one interception, QBR of 74. I mean, to go in there and play that kind of defense, I just thought we did a really good job. We didn't do a great job running the football, which we didn't think we would. We had total 64 yards on the ground. Uh, but, but we moved the football, and we got a couple turnovers, and we did a few things that we needed to do to, you know, to, to keep ourselves in the game. And I thought that the coaching staff had a good game plan, but I just thought at the end of the day we just ran out of gas. Jason? Yeah, we weren't ever going to beat Alabama, but, you know, we've been complaining the last few years about how it's just not been competitive. And like Steven said, you can't look at that final score because, 
because in the fourth quarter we were going for it in fourth down. It didn't matter where it was. I mean, I think one time we went for it on uh, our 29-yard line and didn't get it. So, uh, But we were competitive in that game. I, I had a couple of Alabama fans over to, to watch the game with me wow. and uh, because I wanted to see uh, how stressed they got. And was it was how fun. winners behaved? Is that it, what you're doing? Yeah, it was oh, fun. Man. It was fun watching them get stressed out. And I knew all along we weren't going to win that game. And, but they didn't. They were nervous. And uh, so uh, just to be competitive, you know, the last three years, we've not been in any of these big ball games. You know, these games that we consider big. Uh, Alabama doesn't consider it big anymore but you know they've been 24 to 30 point blowouts every single time against what we would consider our big rivals so for Tennessee to be competitive in that game you know says what we've said kind of all along that it feels like we're headed in the right direction so okay Josh what do you think yeah uh, so Shelton and I got to actually watch this game uh the Alabama and Tennessee game and watch over. Lady die all the same night <laughs> you watch <laughs> A lady what? fell. What'd you just say? A lady fell at Josh's. It was at, we were at my father in law's house. Oh, okay. the game. A lady and, oh okay. and a lady, a lady fell. fell and and Shelton went, didn't catch her. That's pretty she much She went the, face first into the floor, and I was like, I think she's dead. I think there's a, uh, I think there's a bigger story here than even the game. Uh, we're going to turn into law and order. Yeah, yeah it Apparently. just went down. Okay, so, wow. But listen, so we, me, and Shelton, me and Shelton watched the game together, and, and we. I mean, there is some excitement, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if if I've watched a ten, and I've watched every single Tennessee game this year, and I don't know if I was more excited in any other game, and, and they've won games, right, mm -hmm. than that Alabama game. I mean, yeah. and I think for Tennessee and for Tennessee fans, they have to understand that they're not there yet, right? And right. the problem is, is that Tennessee hasn't been there for the past fifteen years, you know. But here, you see glimpses of opportunity throughout the entire Alabama game. You see where the defense stands up and plays. You see where, I mean, Hendon Hooker, unbelievable. I mean, just unbelievable arm. Uh, hopefully, we'll get him back next year at Tennessee and, and be interesting to see how it goes. But you can really tell that these kids are buying into Hypel and that, and that coaching staff's game plan. Um, for Tennessee to only be down by a few points to Alabama, going into the third quarter, right? I mean, Alabama put, what, 28 on them in the fourth? Yeah. That just shows the difference between number two in the country and Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that that will, that shows <clears throat> legacy and, and five-star talent across. I mean, Alabama has five, four, and three-star talent at every single position. They don't have a two-star or one-star guy on their entire team. The water boy is a three-star athlete. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Whoa, 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 and, water boy. and for Tennessee – They've got a lot of two-star and three-star guys, and they have a few big stars. And so when Tennessee continues to get recruiting, Hypo continues to bring some Florida guys up. Uh, that That's what's going to help Tennessee, to be honest, don't, don't is, you think is, speaks, is recruiting. Speaks back to what Shelton said, or just the depth. Yeah, and, and that's huge. And, and for Tennessee, going forward, they're going to have to start using some of these coaches that recruited in Florida against Florida, Florida State, and Miami. They're going And now they're going down there saying, hey, we talked to you three years ago when we were at UCF. Now we're at Tennessee. Come and play for us. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to go, and they're going to have to conquer Georgia and Alabama. And, and I mean, realistically, the South. I mean, you're mm -hmm. going to have to go out there and get players – that play football and right now Tennessee's got some players that play but they don't play for four quarters and we'll see this week because this is what Kentucky's been doing over the past since Stoops has been there and so this week we'll see mm. if Kentucky and, Al and Tennessee we, how they stack up. Thank We've got to take a break here and uh, of course uh, for some reason all three are sporting blue uh, uh, during Kentucky week but whatever it's fine. Uh, it's the uh, Rocky Top Review <laughs> Uh, right here, presented by CHI Memorial. We're on Mix 1041, Talk 1013, The Buzz, and MixTV.TV. Kickoff, 7 o'clock, right here. We're back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. It is Rocky Top Review, uh, presented by CHI Memorial, Mix 1041, Talk 1013, The Buzz. And we're on MixTV.TV. .tv. Shelton, it really has become my favorite segment, yeah. the Josh Rogers NIL situation. And I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I'm a guy that if you're going to set some expectations, always strive to hit those expectations. This guy's coming off a bye week, a bye week. And I look over, and he does not have one NIL. Nothing. No, he, he doesn't he, have anything? He has zero for us today. I have people asking me, what do you think he's going to do this week? And you then, haven't paid me my money. And then, and then this. And then <laughs> this Show week. me the money. Well, then this week. Wait. 
Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, no. Wait, 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 oh, no. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick that we've got Scotty John Mayfield representing Tennessee, and they're thinking we need somebody from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard there was somebody in Cleveland that was a big Georgia fan. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you qualify? <laughs> <laughs> I qualify. <laughs> so we have now gotten Josh a real NIL. Oh, wow. Mayfield Dairy is on board with yeah, Josh yeah. Rogers. Yeah. 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 Well done. Well, well done. I'm on board with wholesale supply. There yeah. we go. There we go. Those definitely That's are. Right. So Scotty and I talked about, we saw when John Fulkerson uh, uh, did the first NIL deal with, with Mayfield, you said, hey, Scotty, yeah. what about me? Yeah. Well, here he is. Yeah. <laughs> Look, this Man. Is, I, I can't tell you, right? So Braves win the World Series. <laughs> And that's, and that's the latest I've stayed up this whole year. <laughs> Georgia's number one in, in, in the polls. Wow, and you're here. I mean, what, what a week. What a week. Josh, is this heaven? I, I don't know. It might. I think it's mix 104, but it's close to heaven. <laughs> we ain't heaven. <laughs> Scotty Mayfield. Scotty, how in the world are you? What's going on, buddy? Well, you're, you know. Come on around there. You're. He's a rascal. Oh, yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> He's been plotting this ever since we had the John Fulkerson. And I'll, I'll have to say, you know, our, uh, Mary Williams, who's our general manager, and they, they uh, arranged all for that to happen. And, um, you know, I didn't know much about John. And we met him. I met him at the press yeah, conference. And um, we did the press conference. And he did about seven minutes of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he... Took some questions, not too long, about the right amount of time. We get through, and I go over to him, and I say, man, you're you're good at this. How many of these have you done? He said, this is my first one. That was surprising, wasn't it? Wow. I was, yeah. I, you know, and so anyway, I hope. We, we don't have any training either. <laughs> we, we, we just show up, just so you know. Well, it's funny, you know, people ask me about uh, being a spokesperson and doing commercials and stuff, and the first commercial I ever did it was just me holding an ice cream carton, looking into the camera, and it was horrible. I mean, I, it was just terrible. And then they finally figured out, even with cameras around, if you can just be talking to somebody about something you might normally talk to them about, it, it you can forget the cameras are there. Yeah. And sooner or later, it turns out okay. So anyway, so you're a big sports fan in general. Big, I mean, you all yes. are doing. Sports stuff all the time, right? That's right. All the time, okay. yeah. Our, uh, yeah, we, you know, we call Scotty after uh, after you said that, and I, of course, Shelton's been in on this too, and uh, <laughs> they, we said, they, hey, neither one of them can keep a secret. <laughs> we just so, did. So just for did. them to be able to keep this, two I, weeks. I, I, I'm th two weeks. I'm I, I'm. I had to park in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind you, that's Scotty. Executive, that's executive. That's parking, executive parking. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I parked in the way one time, Scotty. It was a bad day. <laughs> Now, Scotty, am I am I going to have to look at Josh Rogers on a billboard somewhere? Is that where this is going? <laughs> no, a milk yeah, carton. I, hey, I tell you, it's the only only milk that I drink, only ice cream that I eat. That's there you milk, go. Milk nice. mustache. It's kind of a unofficial, unofficial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Real I'll, I'll unofficial. Take, I'll this take is... unofficial, unofficial. Anyway. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, That's I'll, awesome. Um, well, Scotty, of course, a uh, Georgia Tech man himself, and uh, but my dad went to Georgia, so oh. I never got into that rivalry as much. Oh, okay. I really did. Um, he went to Georgia straight out of the war. Actually went to Georgia and took all their senior dairy courses. Really? Now they, they let him do that. Wow. And he'd been at Wesleyan in Chattanooga. I mean, in, Cle in Athens. Um, matter of fact, I've got, he played football and he played in the Peach Bowl. Did he really? And I mean, this is way back before the Peach Bowl was mm -hmm. anything, I guess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so. Well, yeah. well, just hang around if you got a second. All right. I know he's got a, thing. he's got a, uh, uh, Scotty's got uh, very kind to come down and I really appreciate it. Yeah. I but, can't, I can't believe that you guys got 
the Scotty man. <laughs> First time yeah. Scotty ever dipped ice cream out, I said, that's like Abraham Lincoln handing you a $5 bill. <laughs> <laughs> to come down here for this. Yeah, he sure did. Oh we, we really appreciate it. Uh, so he's going to, i tell you what, Shelton, he'll be our celebrity picker this week. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Let's start with Jason Coxo. Tallahassee goes to Lexington and plays Kentucky. Jason, what do you make of it? Well, I, you know, Kentucky comes into this game. Uh, they're, they're beat up pretty well. Uh, they've had several several tough games in a row, but but what Mark Stoops has done in Lexington is continue to to build the offensive line and defensive line. And so, you know, as as guys graduate, as they go to the pros, as they move on to their careers, the, I mean, the next guy, the sophomores become juniors, and now they're old men and dominating on the offensive line, just like just the blueprint you want to do. And so, Kentucky comes to the end of this game, they expect to beat Tennessee, and they expect it to be a runaway. So, All right, we'll Josh Rogers, what do you make of yeah. it? Uh, tell us he can Kentucky. Yeah, I think that for this week, I think Tennessee has a really great opportunity to come out and play a really good game. Um, for me, what I what I think that is really going to tell the tale for Tennessee this week is how this defense plays coming off of two weeks. Offensively, Hennon Hooker seems to be healthy, some seems to be back, and he's going to be playing. Um, for me, that having two weeks after playing as well as they did against Alabama, they've got a two, uh, that week break in between two weeks really uh to get ready for kentucky for tennessee they need to be focusing on this game because next week is going to be something different right and so for them if they can focus on kentucky this week and this week alone it's going to be a big opportunity for tennessee to hopefully pull pull away a victory john what do you make of it well tennessee's given up 1100 yards uh defensively the last two games to Ole miss and alabama they they cannot continue to give up that many yards uh, against Kentucky, or they're going to get run out of Lexington. Uh, ten, uh, Josh Heupel's 0-2 uh, all-time versus Kentucky when he's off. Uh, both Mark Stoops was able to keep that off his offense average down in yards and points per game. Uh, so the, the, he's not had a lot of success against Kentucky uh, in, in the SEC, while he was in the SEC. Uh, one thing I know will not happen will be the same in 1952 when Tennessee Kentucky played in Knoxville, and there was a record 25 inches of snow. And really? Fans, I don't know. There's supposed to be snow coming fans, this weekend. Fans had to dig dig themselves their way in to Watkins Field and actually had to use shovels to watch the game. Really? And uh, But that will not be happening. Scotty, were you there? <laughs> <laughs> that will not be happening this week. But, uh, I, yeah, I think the Tennessee's they need a quick start, and they really need to, to muffle that Kentucky offense uh, because if, if Tennessee allows Kentucky to score early uh, and they dig themselves a hole, I think Kentucky's defense is just good enough uh, to keep t- Tennessee off the board. Scotty Mayfield uh, joins us. Tennessee at Kentucky. What do you make of it, Scotty? Saturday night. Jason, if you'll hand him that microphone. Or, yeah, there we go. Come on. So, I, I didn't hear the question. Tennessee so. at Kentucky. What, what well, do you I mean, I was really impressed with Tennessee last week against Alabama. Or however long it's been. Two weeks, yeah. Uh, my problem is I record the games and watch them. He watched them on DVR. And I, and I don't necessarily read the paper, so sometimes I'll – see a game three days later and don't know what the score was. But anyway, I was really impressed with Tennessee. And then, you know, just like a lot of football games, there's a couple of breaks here and there. And the next thing you know, um, the tide was rolling. And so it, that's what happened. But with with Kentucky, this is going to be a big game. I mean, if Tennessee can beat them, they're kind of making a statement. That's exactly right. It's going to be tough. But Scotty uh, Mayfield joining us, and he's going to sit in on the picks as our uh, celebrity picker in just a moment. Our, the picks are next. It's Rocky Top Review, week number nine. Hard to believe. Right here on Mix 1041, Talk 1013, and we're on MixTV.TV, presented by CHI Memorial. Back in a moment. All right, uh, back everyone, a final segment of Rocky Top Review presented by CHI Memorial, Mix 1041, Talk 1013, The Buzz. We're also on MixTV.TV and download our free Mix 1041 app. Shelton, the Black Friday shopping blowouts presented by Cleveland Insurance this year. 
It's a great opportunity for uh, people out there. You get chauffeured around all day from, I think it's Kia, is that right? It's Kia. Actually, it's Crown. Crown, Crown. We'll just snip so, that right so, yeah, So, yeah, that's Crown. So, they, they tell me you're going to drive people around <laughs> Crown. Uh, $1,000 uh, we're giving away, but the caveat is you have to pay forward 500 of that to someone that you know yep. that's not a family member or an organization that you feel might need that 500 around Black Friday. So, well, it's two criminals looking over here. I don't, I'm not including Scotty. No, no, no. Talking yeah. about Josh. But so, so, I just want to know how he's coming up with this money to, to sponsor something with you guys, and he hasn't paid us any of our money for our NIL deal with You've Cleveland Insurance. You've got an insurance. NIL deal with, yeah, what, what's well, the deal there, Sheldon? I, I mean, they've made up their own with uh, with Cleveland Insurance, but that's size point. Oh, I uh, think you went uh, through an official member. An official member of Cleveland. Aaron Cagle, official member of Cleveland Insurance. Official and authorized are two different words. So, uh, <laughs> so, so the, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, it's going to be fun. You know, it's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, we have already a lot of people registering, registered through the app. you got to go through the app. Uh, and so someone's going to win. You get driven around all day. You get... Listen, uh, breakfast at Chick Fil A. I think I'm just going to throw in lunch for for somebody. Oh, here we so, go. I mean, oh, we're, now, we're, here so we go. Let's uh, let's let's. But that somebody's going to give five hundred dollars away. We're going to chase you around like the paparazzi until you do. Yep. Uh, but it, it's going to be a fun fun time for somebody. It's a great time. Here's how to register for that: the Black Friday shopping blowout. Register at mymix1041.com. As far as that's where you download the app. If you've got the app, go there. Make sure and hit refresh. Go there. But then if you don't have the app, download from our website. Let's pick some games now. Missouri will play at Georgia. Uh, this at, uh, well, as we come on, this game's probably over, but it was probably over before it started. That was a noon game early. I want to start with Josh Rogers. Number one in the nation. Number one in your hearts. The dogs will win this week, and they'll win next week, too. That's a pre not talking about preview next. for next week. Who's next week? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, that's that's right. Okay. So uh, Missouri and Georgia, by the way, Georgia football, this is our first year covering them on 99.1 FM supplied by Wholesale Supply Group. Jason, what do you think happened? I mean, Missouri's coach, he's on the Stephen Shelton hot seat, has mm -hmm. been for a while. Uh, Georgia wins this game before it gets going. Scotty Mayfield, what about it? Georgia. Yeah, I think so. Shelton? Yeah, Georgia all the way. Okay. A game that's uh, as we're coming on the air uh, here is uh, in progress. Auburn at Texas A&M. They got the big uh, 3:30 SEC slot on CBS. Of course, Scotty will watch it Monday night. That's fine. But uh, Shelton, I want to begin with you. Auburn at Texas A&M. That's the only top 20 matchup of the weekend. Uh, you know who? I don't know. I mean, Texas A&M. I picked them to win the West when the season first started, but. You know, they've had some glimmers of great greatness and glimmers of just really badness. And so Auburn, I, I'm going to go with A&M because they're at home. And that's the only reason I have for you at this point. All right, uh, Jason Cox, what do you make of it? Oh, well, I, yeah, I think A&M, because they are at home, I think the question coming in is Auburn's quarterback, Bo Nix, uh, do they get good Bo or bad Bo? If they get good Bo, I think Auburn's got a real chance to go to A&M and upset them. If they get bad Bo, A&M is going to win in a route, but Scotty, I'll take A&M. Scotty and I met the best Bo a few years ago, Bo Jackson in Athens. Scotty Mayfield, what do you make of it? Auburn at Texas A&M. Well, I could never do this on a regular basis because my heart's in this too much. My son went to Auburn, so I have to say they're going to upset them. I think being at Texas A&M, that'll be a heck of a feat. So, mm -hmm. um, But I'm going to predict K Tennessee to beat Kentucky, and that's going to be in about the same category. That's going to be a hard ups uphill slide. So I'll, I'll pick Auburn. What about it, Josh? Yeah, great pick, Scotty. Uh, Auburn, Are big time. Ooh. Oh, my. Yeah, All, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, Auburn, big time. Over the Texas right bow showed up or he gets hurt in the second string. <laughs> <laughs> Auburn, big time over Texas a &M. All right. Mississippi State at Arkansas, also a game in progress, a 4 o'clock kickoff. Let's begin with Josh Rogers. Yeah, Arkansas and Mississippi State, big game uh, this week. I, For me, you look at these two teams as really the, that second tier in the West, uh, especially, and, but, but they both have great new coaches. Um, it, that, that it being at Arkansas, I'm going to take Arkansas. All right, uh, Shelton, what do you make of it? What happened to Arkansas? I mean, weren't they in the top ten at one point? Mm -hmm. And so – Mississippi State was left for dead on week three, I think it was. Now all of a sudden they're 17th in the nation. I think Mississippi State's figured it out. I think the Pirates got them playing well offensively. They really played well against Kentucky uh, last week. And, and I do think that Mississippi State goes to Arkansas and wins. Jason Cox. Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, three weeks ago, Arkansas was was the darling. Now we're all on, on board with the Pirate. Uh, I'm going to take Arkansas in this one. I think they get it back together and knock off Mississippi State. Scotty Mayfield. 
I'm going to pick Mississippi State. I, I guess I'm too impressed with Kippen. And I thought he behaved himself fairly well at UT, even though all that craziness went on. Uh, but I watched him in the interview before the game, and he was he was I mean the crowd was booing him, and and he was taking it pretty well. I thought he did pretty good, yeah. and 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 I didn't used to like the guy. I mean I don't know why I thought he was a jerk, <laughs> but I think he's come around. So I'm just voting for the coach a little bit there. All right, let's uh, move on. LSU at Alabama as our prime time games tonight. Scotty, I want to begin with you. LSU at Alabama. It's a 7 o'clock start later tonight. I think that'll be a great game, but I think Alabama, I mean, they got it at home. Like they, they, they have to sustain their victories, so I think they'll – and they're, you know, they're number two, I think, in the nation, yes, right? They are. So I yes, think they they'll, they'll take that one. Jason Cox. Uh, LSU's got nothing to play for. Alabama big. Uh, Josh? I think that – I agree with you. LSU has nothing to play for, but this game is always close. And I know LSU has been down this year, but do they go out and win one for Coach O? Coach O. And do it for Cincinnati. Come on. And Cincinnati, get, don't and get, get don't Alabama get out of the number stuff. two position. Come on. This is awful. I'm going LSU. Shelton, he's crazy. Alabama about three touchdowns. You're going LSU. You're picking LSU at Alabama? <laughs> yeah. Now, you realize if LSU wins, we'll be playing this clip forever. It, so no, no, no. Over, over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Florida's at South Carolina, 730 kick on the SEC Network. Shelton? Oh, boy. Uh, Florida, uh, but they've got a lot of trouble down oh, there. Oh, boy, they and, do. And they? so I think Dan Mullins, uh, I think the honeymoon's over. And so uh, give me give me Florida at, at South Carolina. Turned in the honeymoon in Vegas. Josh? Uh, my my brother-in-law went to South Carolina, and I don't pick Florida, so South Carolina. How about it, Jason? Uh, I'll take Florida. I, I just don't think South Carolina's got much to, to offer at all in terms of talent right now. Uh, and, and Florida does. Neither team's headed in the right direction, but, but I'll take Florida. Scotty Mayfield. I think I would pick Florida. It's amazing how many of these out of town that that we're picking. So, yeah, yeah we, I think Florida here. Uh, yeah, certainly. So, all right. Now, Scotty, I do something every week. The guys hate it. But I, I have them pick one Ivy League game of the week. And this week, it's Yale at Brown. Yale at at Brown, and because of your facial expression, Josh, I'm going to start with you. So I'm going to pick Brown because my favorite Mayfield ice cream is a brown cow. Oh, oh in honor of Mayfield. He's already trying out. Yeah. Jo uh, Jason, best, guys. Jason Cox. I, I don't like it when people yell, and so I'm going to go Brown. So. You're going to go Brown. Yeah. Shelton. Uh, brown. And Scotty Mayfield, Yale at Brown. I'm going to say home team here because I have no clue. We don't either, Scotty. <laughs> and yeah, I, they no, don't. Either. I'm going to go with Brown because what can Brown do for you? My friend Lee Lester, big listener. He watches. He owns the UPS store here in Cleveland. Who's shocked that he brought a commercial into this? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Okay. I thought you were going to say Brown because chocolate ice cream is your favorite. There we and go. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Smoky Mountain Fudge, the greatest flavor <laughs> they've ever created. All right, here we go. It's the game that we're all looking forward to, the Tennessee volunteers of the Kentucky Wildcats. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff here. Mix 1041 Talk, 1013 The Buzz. Jason Cox. Kentucky averages about 62 plays a game. Uh, they, they, they're they averaging something like 22 or 23 points a game. I don't think Kentucky can score with Tennessee. Uh if Tennessee can score, which I think they can, and it's going to be chunk plays, we're not going to sustain drives against that defense. But I think in the Hypo offense, I think we're going to throw it over the top enough. We're going to get big chunk plays enough. Uh, and I, if we get to 30, I don't think Kentucky can get to 30. So I'm going to take Tennessee in this game and a close one in the coldest place on earth, Le Lexington, Kentucky. Amen. Yeah, All right, the coldest Sc place. Scotty Mayfield, our guest picker, of course, Mayfield Derry. I'm going to pick Tennessee – I'll uh, watch the uh, second half right before I go to church Sunday morning. I uh, know. He, he uses that DVR. And don't text Scotty and tell him what's <laughs> happening. All right, Josh Rogers. So, I was going to pick Kentucky this week because I think that Kentucky can play with Tennessee. But because Scotty picked Tennessee <laughs> and I'm a Mayfield man, <laughs> I'm going with Tennessee this week. <laughs> and the final word to Stephen Schultz. Uh Kentucky's better than Tennessee. Uh, this is Heupel's game to 
kind of hang his hat on this year. He wins this one. It's a, really a successful season at probably seven and five. He loses this one. They're six and six. Uh, I just don't think Tennessee has the sustainable firepower uh, in the trenches to beat Kentucky in Lexington. All right, there you go. What a special edition. Scotty, thank you so much, buddy. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank you. We I'm love really Scotty well. Mayfield. We love Mayfield Dairy. Let me tell you, I do it every Saturday night. Get you some Mayfield ice cream and get a little uh, hunk of cake or something like that. It goes well with football. <laughs> All right, that's it. It's uh, Rocky Top Review. Thanks to CHI Memorial. And now, the ball network. Oh, 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 oh